What do the fundamental laws of the universe have to do with your ability to focus? By the end of this video, you're going to have six techniques you can use to focus better, be more productive, or find creativity. So what do Newton's laws of motion, learned in physics class and confined to the motion of physical objects, have to do with how we pay attention, learn, work, and accomplish big projects? A lot more than you think. Let's first start with an overview of the man himself. Isaac Newton is one of the most prolific and productive people in history. Part scientist, mathematician, philosopher, theologian. Interestingly enough, Newton had his most productive time during a period of two years when the bubonic plague was ravaging England. He was in forced isolation and working from home, and during this period he made giant leaps in the study of gravity, optics, and calculus. If you're trying to make the case to your boss to continue working from home, there's no better example than Newton to point to. With all that said, what Newton is perhaps most famous for are his three fundamental laws of motion, which he first outlined in his magnum opus, Mathematical Principles of Natural Philosophy. Let's dive in to the very first of these laws. Translated from Latin, Newton's first law states, every body perseveres in its state of rest or of uniform motion in a right line unless it is compelled to change that state by forces impressed thereon. Uh, what? This is more commonly said as, an object at rest stays at rest. An object in motion stays in motion unless an unbalanced force is applied. An unbalanced force is one that is not canceled out by an equal force in the opposite direction. On the other hand, balanced forces cancel out, like the force of gravity acting downwards and the force of the surface acting upwards. Now, objects at rest stay at rest is intuitive to us. Objects in motion stay in motion is more surprising. It says that no continuing force is needed for sustained motion. If you set an object into motion, it will maintain its velocity forever, even if there is no other force applied. Wait a minute, this is not our experience of reality. If you push a book, you'll notice it slows down and eventually stops. The key here is that motion stops only because of other forces. For example, friction or drag. These forces are called resistive forces, or forces that oppose motion. So what keeps objects at rest at rest and absent resistive forces objects in motion in motion? This is the force of inertia. Inertia is the resistance all objects have to a change in their state, whether at rest or in motion. Newton wrote, the innate force of matter is a power of resisting, and that matter endeavors to maintain its present state. Inertia is directly proportional to mass. The more mass, the more resistive an object is to a change in its state. Inertia is foundational to all matter in the universe and is at the heart of this law. In fact, Newton's first law is also called the law of inertia. Newton did not have in mind your personal projects and goals when he discovered the laws of motion, but that doesn't mean they can't be useful in that context. Newton wrote, we deduce the motions of planets, comets, moon, sea. I wish we could derive the rest of phenomena of nature, but I have many reasons to suspect they may depend upon these same forces. This is a traditional free body diagram in physics. As we continue, we want to remain logically consistent with physics, but applied in practical ways. First, we transform our traditional free body diagram to this new context. The object becomes a task or project or goal. It can be anything, studying, fitness goal, a house project, you get the idea. The mass of an object becomes the complexity or size of the task. We'll break this down more later. The force becomes the effort we apply towards the task. The object's motion becomes our progress in completing the task. I will use these term substitutions interchangeably from now on. Now let's get into the techniques for focus, split between three techniques for starting on a goal and three techniques for sustaining and finishing a goal. You may have heard the phrase, starting is the hardest part, and this is true. Physics actually confirms this. And this is not just because of inertia, but resistive forces like friction, which is higher when an object is stationary than when it is moving. Let's get into the first of three strategies for starting. Mass is defined as the quantity of matter something has. When we're translating this from objects to goals, mass can be thought of as the size and complexity of the goal. If you have a big, complex goal to tackle, let's say you want to gain 20 pounds of muscle or write a best-selling novel, the force of inertia can make it very difficult to start. The key is to reduce the mass, or in other words, break the task into smaller pieces, which in turn reduces the force of inertia and so requires less force to start. With complex tasks, the principle is the same. Break the task down into simple component pieces and the force of inertia falls. 
By trying to tackle a big complex goal all at once, the required force and effort becomes daunting and overwhelming. But by reducing size or simplifying, the effort we need to apply becomes easily manageable. We're going to rope in Newton's second law of motion here. It defines force as mass times acceleration. Remember, we're trying to increase our force so we can overcome inertia. One way to increase force is to increase acceleration. In the best-selling book, The 5 Second Rule, author Mel Robbins outlines a similar principle without ever mentioning physics. She writes, The moment you have an instinct to act on a goal, count down 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and physically move or your brain will stop you. This get up and get going approach can be equated to quick acceleration. Mel Robbins continues, right before we're about to do something that feels difficult, scary, or uncertain, we hesitate. Hesitation is the kiss of death. You might hesitate for just a nanosecond, but that's all it takes. That one small hesitation triggers a mental system that's designed to stop you. Replace the word hesitation here with overthinking, waiting, or doubting, and the result is the same. This hesitation can be thought of as a deceleration and deceleration means less force to overcome inertia. When you overthink starting a task rather than just doing it, what you are doing is decelerating yourself so much your force towards a goal evaporates. So if you're having trouble starting something, just go, without thinking. Don't give your mind time to step in and decelerate. Force is a vector. All that means is it has a magnitude and a direction. We'll cover direction later. For now, how can we increase magnitude? Magnitude can be thought of as commitment, specifically of energy, whether mental or physical. Too often when we do tasks, we are half in and half out. We all have limited amounts of time and energy in a day, and it can be thinly spread across various tasks and directions. Often, we don't even consciously know where our energy is going or what our force vectors are. How can we commit energy towards a new task or goal and apply a high magnitude of force? First, allocate specific times to your task. Time can exist without any force applied, but force cannot be applied without time to do it. Second, understand why you have the goal that you have. Understanding why helps clarify the importance and significance of your goal. That sense of significance will create the internal drive and motivation needed to stick with it. Last, use habits, routines, or rituals. What habits essentially do is make commitment to a task automatic and effortless. You don't need to rely on your willpower to start something, it just happens because it's trained to happen. Motivation can be fleeting and habits pick up the slack. Seth Godin writes, your work is too important to be left to how you feel today. Waiting for a feeling is a luxury we don't have time for. So the hard part is done and you've started on a goal. Now are you struggling to sustain progress? An object in motion is supposed to stay in motion. What's going on? For the rest of the video, we'll uncover three strategies that help us to keep progressing on big projects and goals. The world is filled with resistive forces, or as Stephen Pressfield calls it in his mega bestseller, The War of Art, Resistance. When you check a notification or become distracted, you are giving in to these resistive forces and allowing motion on your primary goal to come to a standstill. Remember, to get a stationary object moving, you have to overcome both inertia and static friction. It's harder to get a stationary object moving again than it is to just keep it in motion. This is the cost of distraction. What about switching continually between different tasks? Each time you task switch, brain imaging reveals you leave something called attention residue behind, a fragment of cognitive processing that stays devoted to the tasks you are switching between. This split attention leaves you fragmented and unable to direct force towards your priorities. What techniques can we use to overcome these challenges? 1. Remove distractions from the environment. In physics terms, an environment with less matter means less resistance and less rough surfaces to get caught on means less friction. 2. Use task batching. Set aside specific time and place for certain tasks or for handling notifications. 3. Stay connected to the significance of your current task. The tension of that connection can pull you past distractions and less important things. Last, understand that even if you do all of this, distractions are still inevitable. The important thing is to notice them as they are happening. Mindfulness and meditation practices can make this noticing process easier. Once you notice, accelerate away from the distraction rapidly. This will create the force necessary to not get trapped in an endless scroll or a frictionless interface. Force is a vector. It has both magnitude and direction. We already discussed maximizing magnitude through commitment. What about direction, the other aspect of force? If you're stuck, try finding a new direction to apply force. Consider if there are many dimensions to your project. 
Suddenly, it becomes difficult to decipher which direction to apply force. How can we figure this out if we get stuck? First, clarify the goal. We often don't make progress, not because we don't have the time or energy, but because we don't have clarity on what the final goal is. When you have a clear goal, you can break it down into sub-goals along the way, similar to how an author writes an outline. Second, try multiple directions to figure out how to orient. When you go down one path that's not working, don't be afraid to retrace your steps and find another path. Don't fall victim to the sunk cost fallacy. Last, focus only on what you can control. Things you can't control might knock you off course, but to get back on track, we have to buckle down and focus on our process and not rely on inspiration or luck. It's also why many professional authors, when developing their routine, focus on how much time they've spent writing, rather than how much of their book they've completed. It's something only they can control. This video wouldn't be complete without introducing Newton's last law of motion. His third law states that for every action or force in nature, there is an equal and opposite reaction. For the force you exert on a task, an equal and opposite force is exerted on you. However, you are much bigger than any task, so we absorb that force. Much like when we push off the earth to walk, we're not too worried about the effect of that force on the earth, but effort does take its toll, and this law points towards the need for rest and recovery, for breaks. Some productivity techniques recommend force breaks. Use these only on tasks where it's easy to restart progress after you come back from the break. Because the timer interrupts you, this may not be ideal for tasks that rely more on flow or deep work. For those tasks, take breaks when you need to refuel your energy, reaffirm your commitment, or to reorient direction. Take a break when you can no longer effectively meet resistance or are natural stopping or pivot points. The main idea of a break is to come back rejuvenated. We've gone over a lot in under 15 minutes. An overview of Newton's three laws of motion and six techniques for focus and getting things done with a few sub techniques. So don't worry if you need to go back and repeat parts of the video. I think you'll discover some new things when you watch it again. Since we're discussing laws of motion, it's worth asking what a law actually is. Laws are observations of nature, usually expressed as a mathematical relationship. This is the closest we can get to a mathematical truth about nature. As with any truth, you can derive other truths from them. I encourage you to think about how the laws of motion are framed here, and you can even discover your own techniques and ideas that work practically for you. I'm a new YouTube channel that will be doing original videos at the intersection of science, philosophy, psychology, and math. I like to blend these topics because the deepest truths are expressed in multiple ways and across many contexts. Please give this video a like if you enjoyed it, and make sure you subscribe to my channel, it means a lot.